Hello, this is Greg French. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to conclude uh, the hardware series. This is going to be lesson 1-4 uh, of our computer repair training series. Uh, instructions stored on the motherboard and other boards. We're talking about BIOS, uh, the basic input and output system. Now, this is data and instructions that are stored on ROM chips that are on the motherboard. Uh, the ROM BIOS chips are a type of firmware. Now we call it firmware, not software, because it's on a chip. Three purposes of the ROM BIOS. Uh, we have system BIOS. This is used to manage uh, simple devices on the computer. We also have a startup BIOS, and this is used to start the computer. have to have some instructions that the computer can read uh, before it starts reading the hard drive, and this is what starts the computer. Now, the CMOS setup. This is used to change uh, settings in our motherboard. Uh, we can configure the motherboard using the CMOS. Now, flash ROM. Uh, this is ROM chips that can be overwritten. Uh, so that we can update our, our ROM BIOS. Now, the, bio, uh, uh, the Gigabyte motherboard and some other bo motherboards util utilize what's called a dual uh, BIOS. Uh, these, again, are firmware chips that contain both the flash ROM and the CMOS RAM. Now, if for some reason uh, one of these chips has become corrupted or infected with a virus, uh, as the computer boots up, it will detect this and then automatically restore from an image uh, the BIOS chips. Also, the BIOS chips can, again, be updated uh, from, uh, from the Internet. So this is a kind of a newer, newer feature. Uh, advanced uh, configuration and power interface. This is called the ACPI. This is standard specifying your power saving features. Uh, this is a real important, especially for the EPA, so that we can keep our air clean by automatically powering down these computers when you walk away from them. This uh, reduces the uh, load on the electrical system or the electrical uh, grid for the state and nation, which allows us to uh, produce less electricity and burn less coal and fuel and therefore keep our air a little cleaner. Uh, supported by most systems such as Windows, uh, most all computers today and operating systems have support for this. Advanced Power Management, uh, APM, this is on the older uh, systems. It's been replaced now by the ACPI. Uh, plug and play, also known as PNP. This is standard simplifying the installation of hardware devices. Anytime you plug in a new device, restart your computer, plug and play will come into effect identifying that device and doing some installing. Uh, the PNP BIOS uh, begins this process of configuring the devices. It will identify those devices as it begins to boot up. PNP compliant operating systems complete the configuration, such as Windows. In summary, uh, we're going to summarize all of... Uh, Chapter 1, Hardware. A computer comprises both hardware and software. We can't get the computer to do anything without the software. Main functions, input, output, processing, and storage. Everything connected to the computer, we have input devices, keyboard, mouse, and then output devices such as your monitor and your printer. We do the processing through the CPU on the motherboard. Uh, we have storage, both primary storage and secondary storage, primary being the RAM, uh, secondary being the hard drive. Data is stored in a binary format, ones and zeros, on or off. Computer doesn't understand English or any other language. Its language is ones and zeros. It runs extremely fast, and it can manipulate these ones and zeros in anything we need. Input-output devices, again, keyboard, mouse, printer, and monitor. Motherboard system is also called the system board. It contains the CPU. Uh, access to the circuit boards and peripherals. Summary continued. Primary storage RAM, it is volatile and temporary, meaning the power goes off, the memory goes away. That's why we need secondary storage, so it's a, a hard drive, so that we can store that information. It's called non-volatile. Those are important terms, volatile and non-volatile. You might see them on a test. Parallel and serial ATA standards. Uh, this enables secondary storage devices, hard drives, to interface with the motherboard. Uh, the serial, the new SATA, is about just about double the bandwidth over the older ATA, going from 50 megabits or megabytes per second up to about 100 megabytes per second. That's what we call sustained throughput. Computer bus system of uh, communication pathways and protocols. Uh, ROM BIOS helps start the PCs, uh, manage and simple devices, and change uh, some motherboard settings. Activities. Uh, I want you to do some conversion. We're going to have a conversion activity. I want, we, I want you to be able to convert from megahertz uh, to gigahertz. You can see that 5,000 megahertz here is equal to 5 gigahertz.
And 5 gigahertz, if you wrote it out, would be 5 billion hertz. Also, Lab 1.5, comparing costs. Uh, I want you to complete that and, return, and turn that in. And also, uh, Lab 1.6, uh, plan an ideal system. What would you plan for an ideal system? And also, if you build a computer today, is it going to be cheaper than buying a computer already completed? You'll find out that uh, costs you a little bit more to build your own computer. But by building your own computer, you learn an awful lot. Uh, this is it for this part of the series for Chapter 1 Hardware. Uh, thank you very much for your time.